اعتکاف. Scholars of Islam paid attention in books of fiqh and purification with i'tikaf, which includes several acts of worship in a period of time. In this period, a Muslim is separated from the world and from its people. Literally, i'tikaf means persistence with something and confinement of oneself unto it. I'tikaf in the context of sharia implies staying persistently or in seclusion in the masjid for the purpose of worshipping Allah. I'tikaf is enjoined on us as was on those before us. Allah says, And we commanded Ibrahim and Ismail that they should purify my house, meaning the Kaaba at Mecca, for those who are circumambulating it, or secluding, meaning i'tikaf, or bowing or prostrating themselves there in prayer. I'tikaf is a recommended and not compulsory act that can be performed every time. However, the best form of i'tikaf is that performed at the last 10 days of Ramadan. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said the Prophet used to seclude himself in the mosque for the last 10 days of Ramadan until his death. I'tikaf must have intention that he who performs i'tikaf makes to worship and get closer to Allah, the sublime and the great. That the masjid in which he is performing i'tikaf is a masjid where jama'ah or congregation salah is performed. It is not permissible to perform it except in a masjid. Allah Almighty says, and do not have relations with them as long as you are in i'tikaf in the masjids. This is because the Prophet, peace be upon him, did that. I'tikaf in a masjid in which there is no jama'ah salah necessitates that one either abandons that salah when it is obligatory for him to perform it or he will be forced to leave his i'tikaf repeatedly each time jama'ah salah is due which goes against the purpose of i'tikaf. Concerning females, then her i'tikaf is correct in every masjid irrespective of whether the congregational prayer is performed in that masjid or not. This is on condition that her i'tikaf does not distract the males observing i'tikaf. If this is the case, then she should be prevented. It is better that the mosque where he makes i'tikaf is the central mosque where in Salat al-Jumu'ah is observed but it is not a condition for i'tikaf. Also, it is required for one who performs i'tikaf to purify from the bigger filth. It is thus not permissible for a man who has not yet purified from janaba or a female who undergoes either postnatal or menstrual bleeding to perform i'tikaf. This is because they are not allowed to stay in the masjid. It is permissible to perform i'tikaf any day and for any period except that the most preferred is that the i'tikaf should not be performed for lesser than a complete day or night. This is because it is neither recorded from the Prophet nor from any of his companions to have performed i'tikaf for a lesser period. As for the one who intends to observe i'tikaf during the last 10 days of Ramadan, he should pray Fajr on the morning of the 21st day in the mosques where which he intends to perform i'tikaf and will subsequently enter into his seclusion, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, reported that the Prophet used to perform i'tikaf every Ramadan during the last 10 days when he prayed Salat al-Subh, he entered the place for his i'tikaf. I'tikaf ends by sunset on the last day of Ramadan. However, it is recommended to delay going out until the early morning on Eid day because this is what was recorded from many of our pious predecessors. During i'tikaf, it is permissible to go out of the mosque for necessities like eating and drinking, if there is no one to assist. It is also permissible to go out in order to defecate. It is authentically reported from Aisha that she said, While in i'tikaf, the Prophet used to bring his head towards me, so that I would help him dress, but he never entered the house except for human necessities. 
Also, it is permissible to engage in beneficial discussions with people and to ask about their affairs, but it is not good to do much of that, since it negates the objectives of i'tikaf. From acts which are permissible is to welcome and to see off any member of his family and relatives who visited him. On the authority of Safiya bint Huyay, a wife of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, I once visited the Prophet in the night while he was performing i'tikaf to discuss some issues with him. Then when I rose to leave, he stood up and accompanied me. If a Muslim had the intention of i'tikaf for a particular period and later discontinued it, it is permissible for him to pay back. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, reported that when the Prophet intended to perform i'tikaf, he entered his place of seclusion, which was a tent in the mosque. After observing Salatul Subh, then one day he ordered that his tent should be erected because he intended i'tikaf for the last 10 days of Ramadan and that was done. Thereafter, Zainab, a wife of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered that her tent be erected and some other wives of the Prophet ordered that their tents also be erected. Thereafter, and on the completion of Salatul Subh, the Prophet saw several tents within the mosque. Then he inquired, Do you all intend righteousness? Then he ordered that his tent be pulled down and he left i'tikaf in the month of Ramadan for that year until he paid back at the first 10 days of Shawwal. In another narration, he paid back in the last 10 days of Shawwal.